What is up everybody and welcome to today's episode of the ARC Beginner's Guide here on the island where I'm going to be showing you how to build your very first greenhouse and grow your first crops and tame your first bee. So there is a lot on the agenda today but if you watched last week's episode you will have seen there is a lot of changes that have happened. I did get super carried away this weekend building a brand new base and enclosure for myself and the dinos we have. We've got this big old shed here where I'm keeping everybody safe just in case we get bugs and stuff that tend to spawn in in the redwoods here. So I've got all the dinos nicely lined up. I even went and tamed a bear and an otter on the live stream we did on Twitch on Friday. So huge thanks if you did uh, attend that. That was a lot of fun. But as you can see, we've got a crafting area outside here and then a cooking area as well over here and there's still plenty of space for expansion and also plenty of space to build our greenhouse which we're going to get into right away and if you do want to make yourself a greenhouse which i would advise at this stage you're going to need to learn yourself some engrams i haven't learned all of the pieces you can do if you want i'm just trying to say some of my engram points here but the ones i've learned here that are highlighted are the ones i am going to be using today and then if you would like to craft your greenhouse stuff you need to get into your smithy and you can see you can craft them here. They do require cementing paste, crystal and metal ingot. So I'm going to go and put these in my inventory. I'm also going to need some foundations and some stairs. Oh my goodness. Apparently carrying poo is a, a really heavy business here. I'm going to put the poo in the smithy. I will talk a bit about why I'm carrying so much of that in just a second because it is important for today. But I'm going to build it over here. I am going to build a relatively small structure because it is just me playing at the moment. So I'm not going to need an incredible amount. So we're going to do three by three, I think. Should be enough for about seven or eight crop plots. Let's have a look. I'm going to leave a gap in the middle. And there's a good reason for that. I'm going to be placing my beehive here. Beehive needs to be placed on bare ground rather than on a foundation. So we're going to leave that there. Put some stairs in just so I can get in and out more easily. And then we've got wall pieces, door frame, a door. I've gone with the double door just because it's a bit easier to get in and out. But a single door will work fine if that's what you would rather do. And it is important that we place our greenhouse structures covering the space entirely otherwise we're not going to get that greenhouse buff for our crops which is going to be important because it's going to increase the speed at which they grow but let me see we've got these little um sloped pieces here you can just have a completely flat roof if you prefer uh, personally I, I like to have a bit of a sloped roof if i can i think it looks pretty neat there we go a couple more wall pieces here and here and then we can go and put in the sloped pieces Ooh, there we go lovely now i'm not going to put the uh the rest of the roof on just a second because i want to show you what happens if you don't completely cover your greenhouse the next thing we're going to need are crop plots you do have a couple of size options here you've got the small medium and large i would always go with the large because you get a higher yield and it's only slightly more expensive you can craft these up in your own inventory they're pretty heavy i've got a couple uh, that i have already made up here i'm also going to go ahead and grab some pipes and a tap because we are going to need to hook up our greenhouse to our water network as well so Hot plots can sit, they can sit directly on the ground if you want, but they can also sit on foundations. I'm going to put one here, which is technically covered by a roof. Technically, sorry, covered by a roof. And then one here, which is not, just so you can see the difference. Greenhouse effect, 300% at the very bottom in the dark green there. So that's showing that the greenhouse is working. Over here, it says greenhouse effect zero, which means it is not covered by a roof. Also, you do want to make sure that your greenhouse uh, can have a clear path to the sky. So a greenhouse wouldn't work if you put it indoors, if you built it inside a cave, or if you built it under a large tree as well. So make sure you can see the sky, so it's going to work. And then as we put the last bits of roof in, ugh, this should switch to 300% greenhouse effect. Now. 
we can see it also says not fertilized not seeded and it says water zero out of 600 irrigated so we need to make sure that this is properly irrigated so that that water fills up to 600 out of 600 so I might as well squeeze as many of these as i can in here so that we can make use of all of the space i'm only going to go and grow vegetables today because vegetables are required in order to make kibble and kibble is a dino superfood that helps increase taming effectiveness and speed and kibble is going to require a whole separate guide so we won't be focusing directly on that today but we do need to start producing crops as a priority i'm going to put seven in because i want to leave a little bit of a walkway here so let's go and hook this up to our water network i've got myself a flexible pipe piece a tap and we've got some of these uh, it cross intersection pieces I'm going to kind of clip these into the uh, foundations here so we can hide them a little bit. Get one, two under there. You can, you can see the pipe sticking out just there to see that you've placed it. And then I've, I've actually got a water network running underground from this station here to here. So technically speaking, I should be able to put the flexible pipe in. There we go. And you can see that it's turned blue, which means water's running through it. I don't think that looks too bad actually sticking out a bit but it's okay and then if we place a pipe a pipe a tap i can place it here or i can place it here we'll place it in the middle just to give it the best coverage we can see it's working we've got that water animation going and as we can see it now says 600 out of 600 irrigated so i just want to quickly check now that all the crop plots have access to water 600 out of 600 fantastic it's looking good. If for whatever reason the water supply isn't reaching some of your crop plots, you can just extend the network and place down some more taps. But we are looking good. We can see that it says not fertilized though. So we need to go and make some fertilizer. And the very first way that you are gonna do that is by making a compost bin, which I have already made. You can craft this in your inventory. And this is the reason why I have been saving all of this poop. I have been going around gathering my dino's poop. I've just heard somebody poop. Who pooped? It was the bear. There we go. <laughs> And in order to make fertilizer, oh, an egg as well. Oh my goodness. I want to be grabbing eggs, all the eggs, all the poop. We are going to place this compost bin. You can place more than one as well to speed up the process, but for now one is going to do. And inside of your compost bin, you are going to want to put for every 50 thatch, you need three pieces of poop. And it doesn't matter what size your poop is. For now, I'm going to use the, the smaller pieces of poop I want to keep hold of the bigger pieces so we've got one two three four five six we can only do uh two pieces for now it takes about i think 45 minutes per uh per piece of fertilizer to be produced and it is an automatic process so you just have to go away and do something else and wait but in the meantime in order to kind of help start your process off you can put poop directly into the crop plots which is why i've been saving the slightly bigger pieces now, poop does not uh, fertilise for as long before decaying inside here, which is why fertiliser is ideal. But it's going to work for now so that we can at least get started with our crop growing process. And at this point, it looks like we are only short of one thing, which are crop seeds. And they are very easy to get hold of. All you need to do is grab yourself one of your berry farming dinos. So I'm going to grab Billy here. And we're going to go out and find some berry bushes, farm the berry bushes, and they should drop seeds. Our crop seeds come in four varieties. We have rock carrot, citronelle, long grass, and sava root. And you might have to do a little bit of farming in order to get all of the seeds you need. Seeds do expire a bit like food does, so you're going to want to maybe keep hold of a stack in your fridge. Let me just check what we've got in our inventory so far. We've got the rock carrot, we've got long grass, we've got one citronelle, but no sava root. So we're going to need to keep farming until we get all four, because all four are going to be required to craft and cook all of the kibble that we will need down the line. You can tame uh, certain creatures, herbivores particularly, uh, with vegetables directly. They are better than berries, but they're still not quite as good as kibble definitely a useful thing for us to be doing at this stage 
Okay, got a few more bits. And we've got one Saba root seed. We let, let's grab one more before we head back. You can grow berries as well if you wish, but I don't tend to do that because we have an abundance of berry bushes all around the place and we have no way of naturally farming crops in the wild on this map, which is the island, of course. So I'm going to be prioritising my space for the veggies. There we go. A few more seeds. Let's drop everything else and we'll head on back so that we can plant these. So all we need to do now is to put one seed per crop plot and boom. We can see we have a little sapling here and it says crop long grass seed seedling. So at the moment we haven't got any crops that have been produced but over time it slowly will produce as long as it has the water supply and a means of fertilization. So we've got long grass there. I'll do two long grass. I'll do two rock carrot. I will do two sava roots and then one citronelle. And now, there we go. So, as you can see, they're all starting to pop up and all we have to do now is just wait. And what better thing to do whilst we're waiting then shutting ourselves in the greenhouse. Oh, no. <laughs> then going to tame a bee. Why do we need to tame a bee? Well, we need to tame a bee in order to get a beehive. And honey is another really important component in making kibble. So, I tamed a bear the other day. And there's a very good reason for that. Bears are fantastic when you're coming to tame a bee. Or indeed, if you just want to simply harvest the honey from the hives. So cute when they level up. Oh my gosh, the little wave. I just can't. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and pop this bear into a cryopod, which is Ark's answer to Pokeballs, essentially. And it means that we can transport dinos much more easily around the map. If you do want to tame yourself a bear, it is a knockout tame, but I would highly recommend crafting yourself a long neck rifle and making yourself some tranquilizer darts to replace your crossbow and your tranquilizer arrows because the long neck will do less physical damage but more torpor damage where it, as it's vice versa with your crossbow and bears are particularly rough when trying to tame they don't have the best health pool so it's really easy to accidentally kill them in the taming process so yeah Get yourself a long neck rifle and all you need to do is build a small trap, a small walk-in trap, lure the bear in, knock it out, and it could be tamed with honey. If you can gather some honey beforehand, brilliant, it will tame quicker, but meat or prime meat will do the job at this stage for sure. Another thing that we're going to need in order to tame our queen bee today besides the bear is going to be a brand new set of armour. We're going to need some ghillie armour, which I have already crafted up inside of my own inventory here. We're going to need some organic polymer hide and fibre to make this. And the great thing about this armour is that it provides us with some camouflage. And since the queen bee is a passive tame, it's going to be really useful to be able to sneak up on her. It also provides a little bit of um, insulation against the heat as well. So really useful for being in the redwoods where it can often get quite hot. First place I would always look for a beehive would be in the south of the map near to where we spawned. You can actually find beehives really anywhere along the south coast all the way from the red ob in the west running all the way through to the green ob in the east and in fact you can get yourself uh, onto the wiki and find a really neat guide that will show you exactly where all of the beehives spawn. We are at approximately 80-40 just here on the south beach and you tend to get the beehive sitting along these cliff walls here there's usually one here but i can't see one today let me just go back this way sometimes we have them a little bit further down and here we are look there's one here just on the right this is what they look like so we need to try and break this open with our bear i'm gonna go and park my argentavis a little bit further away because i don't want uh, the bees to aggro to the argentavis or anything like that. And I'm going to make sure my RG is on passive as well so it doesn't try to intervene. Let's have a look. So with the bear, we can actually harvest the honey as well. And we get three times as much honey as we would if we were doing it with our own hands. So if we use the right click... Oh, can I even reach it? 
There we go. We can see 15 giant bee honey. And if I look in the bear's inventory, we can see that they don't stack and they have a spoil timer of an hour and 20 minutes, which isn't long at all. However, if you put the, the bee honey in your own inventory, that spoil timer goes all the way down to 20 minutes. So ideally you want to store it in your animal's inventory, although the bear will actually eat this. It really likes honey. And you want to get it into a fridge as soon as possible, really. But we want to be using the left click to attack the hive. Now, there aren't any worker bees coming out of the hive, which is telling me that there isn't a queen bee in here. So I'm going to go and destroy it and move on to try and find the next hive. Now, it might take you quite some time to find a hive that actually spawns a queen bee in. Hives can be a little bit awkward. I think it took me about 10 different beehives to look through the other day when I was live streaming in order to find a queen bee that I wanted. Uh, you can do dino wipes if you're playing single player or if you're an admin of a server. Uh, that will wipe any queen bees that are present and make sure that new ones are spawning in. I would be really wary about destroying all hives, which is a command that you can use because they can take quite some time. I'm talking about hours and hours of game time for them to respawn back in. So just be patient, keep hunting, and you will find your queen eventually, as long as you don't get stuck in trees, like I am. <laughs> I'm heading on over to this cliff now, which is near the moor, near where we very first started. I often find several spawns along here. Now, because I looked along this particular cliff the other day, I'm pretty sure there aren't going to be any right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, on upwards to the plateau to see if we have any up here. Oh, come on, bear, you can do the things. I only found out the other day that with the bear, the longer you run for without obstruction, the faster you go, which is pretty neat. There we go, look at that. And we sometimes get a hive spawning in here. Doesn't look like we have one at the moment. Nope, nothing there. So I'm going to move over to this cliff here. We often get them spawning around here. Yes, I can see one. I can see one. Okay, now... It looks like it's a little bit out of our reach. So this is why I bought myself a few structures in order to build up to the hives if I need to reach them. So I've got my foundation, my pillars, my ceiling piece and my stairs. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm just going to have to do a bit of guesswork here, but I want to place the pillar pretty close on the ground to where the hive is above. Do something like that. Uh, that and then that's probably high enough to be honest and I want to sit my ceiling piece on top and then build the stairs down from it and the reason I've got the foundations is is that we need that extra foundation support just here um, uh, there we go floaty foundation it's okay let's pretend that it's not floating and it's all fine <laughs> alright that should do it you should be able to get the bear up now so this is only needed if your hive isn't accessible from the ground, otherwise you should be fine. But I could reach it now, I'm going to gather some honey, because why not, and then we're going to attack it. Okay, it looks like we uh, don't have a queen bee here, sadly. Okay, so I have been looking for quite some time now, all over for a queen bee, and I think I might have finally found one here in the redwoods. You can see above this hive that we have a bunch of worker bees. There we go. And that's because I've just shot at their hive with my long neck rifle, which I can actually do from the back of my bear. And as soon as those popped out, I thought, yes, that means we have a queen bee. Now, in order to attack it with the bear, I am going to have to build up to it. I still want to use my bear to attack it because the bear does a pretty decent amount of damage compared to my shotgun. I don't want the health of the hive to restore too quickly, otherwise I'm going to waste a lot of ammo. Let me build a nice little ramp up to it. You do need to be careful if you end up searching for your hives in the redwoods, because we do have a lot of carnivorous dinos here. We've got a lot of thylacolio, which are the marsupial animals that like to sit in trees and jump on you. And they will dismount you if you're on a flyer as well. So do be super, super careful. Just got to put a foundation in there, otherwise stairs won't extend outwards any further let me see can i snap this in wish bears could jump that would make uh that'd make my life a little bit easier okay something like that bit of a weird design but it should there we go allow for that foundation support now if i left click attack we want to keep hitting the hive we are taking a tiny bit of damage but it's okay nothing to be worried about 
And we have a double hive, but we can see the queen is out. She is out. We do want to kill these. The queen is over there in the distance. So what I can do now is I can equip my rare flowers onto my zero slot. That is what we're going to be feeding her. And we need to chase after her. Now I've got my ghillie on, so I am camouflaged. I don't want to run. Otherwise she's going to get a little bit frightened. Let's go up to her. There we go. Yeah, we're taking a little bit of damage here. That's okay. Just keep your distance if that happens. And the, as you can see, the, uh, the the drones end up dying if they go too far from the queen. It can be a little bit difficult to keep track of her. But if we listen out for her, there she is. Come and take the rare flowers. Don't go off the edge for me now. Go up slowly. And there we go. She is tamed. <laughs> Giant queen bee. So at this point, the worker drones, or the worker bees, I should say, are going to stop attacking you. And what we can do at this point is we can do a couple of things. We can pop her into a cryopod if we want, or we can obtain beehive by pressing E. And what that does is don't worry about that animation, but it will give you a beehive in your inventory, which you can place down. There we go. And then we have our very own beehive. Let's get back to base and put it inside our greenhouse. If we want to do that really easy, just demolish and she'll turn into a bee again. Yeah, let's head back. And now we can place our beehive in our greenhouse. And in order for it to start producing honey, you are going to need to pop a stack of rare flowers inside. And the beehive will consume one rare flower every four hours and should produce a giant bee honey every 45 minutes. And whilst the, the honey is in the beehive, its spoil timer is really long, so you don't need to worry about it. But do make sure once you have taken it out of the hive that you do put it in the fridge or use it straight away. It's really as easy as that. Just make sure that you do keep a stack of rare flowers in here at all times. Otherwise the beehive will decay. And uh, yeah, we really don't want that to happen. And if we have a little look in our compost bin, we can see that we've finally got a little bit of fertilizer. So I can go and put that in my crop plots. We haven't got any crops quite yet, but soon enough we will get some. As you can see, the plants have already got to their next stage. They are middlings. So as soon as they are fully grown, they will start producing crops for us. So we are now in a really good position. Start preparing to make some kibble for taming dinos. So there we have it. How to build your greenhouse, how to grow your crops, and how to get your first beehive. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching today. If you did like the content, please consider subscribing and giving a big thumbs up to the video. And if you want to catch me in the meantime, you can see me over on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 2pm GMT. So until next time, folks, see you later.